So what is going on guys? This is Ryan here. And this is the Ryan here. And welcome back guys to once again another video discussing Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. Now over the past couple of hours as of recording this video some really interesting news has actually come out and we're now seeing a Five Nights at Freddy's sister location official, official Steam page. Yeah and obviously uh, this is quite overwhelming to look at the amount of images that have been put in here. Also the trailer, the thumbnail, the synopsis. We're gonna yeah. try and break it down and uh, see what we can we can find. Absolutely and we're actually doing this a day later guys because we really want to spend some time to dissect and make sure we don't miss any of the smaller details and guys if you do enjoy this video as well remember to drop us that like ray and it's always appreciated and let's get straight into this so the first thing we're actually going to be looking at is the thumbnail choice that scott actually used for the five nights of freddy's sister location and it's a interesting character that he's actually chosen considering what we saw in the trailer absolutely yeah i mean we see that baby seems to be this very prominent and important character to the five nights of freddy's sister location game and now he's actually putting fun time freddy's face instead of baby's face on the thumbnail and I think there's a few reasons why he've do why he's done this and I think the first one is because of course in every one of the games apart from Five Nights at Freddy's 3 we've always seen Freddy on the thumbnail I think he's still doing it because of course the game is called Five Nights at Freddy's yeah obviously he wants to keep up the momentum of the Five Nights at Freddy's games it wasn't until like uh, recently that he actually added the Five Nights at Freddy's onto the actual sister location thing because originally it was just sister location I believe interestingly enough though the thumbnail itself actually says sister location but I think why Scott's only put that and not Five Nights at Freddy's is because we're already seeing the iconic Freddy Fazbear in the thumbnail and that instantly yeah. links this game to a Five Nights at Freddy's related game too. I don't know, it's very strange because like like I said before, obviously it was all based around Baby Yeah. and all of a sudden now it's Freddy but like you say, obviously the other games are based on Freddy but I don't know, maybe Freddy holds a more significant role than we actually think in this game, who knows? I think he will to be honest or should I say it will for now. I don't want to actually go any gender specifics just yet because there's a big debate still going on about this but yeah. it's going to be interesting. It shows that Freddy is not a forgotten animatronic like a lot of people were thinking. He's still going to be there and he's going to be a prominent character in the franchise. Yeah, definitely. Another thing as well is now that we actually have the community hub for the sister location, all of the people can now theorize on the official Steam page and they can just share their ideas, which I think is really, really cool. And I mean, this might be a way now to get direct responses from Scott in regards to the sister location so we can now start to learn more about the franchise from, of course, the creator himself. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome, actually. Well, we know Scott's very uh, active in the comment section, usually just for people who criticize his game games, but yep. there is the odd occasion where he will reply to a law-related question, so hopefully that is the case this time. Well, all you really need is that wink face, and we know what that means. Exactly, yes. So now we're actually going to be reading the synopsis of this game and the description of what the game's actually about. So it says here, about this game, Welcome to Circus Baby's Pizza World, where family fun and interactivity go beyond anything you've seen at those other pizza places, with cutting-edge animatronic entertainers that will knock your kids' socks off, as well as customized pizza catering. No party is complete without Circus Baby and the gang. Now hiring, late night technician. Must enjoy cramped spaces and be comfortable around active machinery. Not responsible for death or dismemberment. Um, I don't think they're going to get many applications uh, going through the door for this job, really, on the surface. They, they, it was the same for the whole Five Nights at Freddy's 1 to 3, I believe, yeah. as well. They were saying de death or dismemberment. But I, I kind of believe this more, that you would probably get like mangled up being a technician. Yeah. Like, But, you know, being a night guard, it's like, why would I get dismembered? You know, I wouldn't really go for that job. This is where loads of questions start to really start being uh, blossomed, I guess you can say. Yeah. Because there's so many different things in this which hint to different, well, scenarios and different ways the game can go. We're going to dissect a few of those now. And we'll start firstly by talking about the first title where it says, Welcome to Circus Baby's Pizza World, where family fun and interactivity go beyond anything you've seen at those other pizza places. So one again is referring to the Circus Baby. So then again, there we go. Baby is actually going to be leading this pizzeria place. It is still kind of a pizzeria esque thing yeah. and it actually says family fun and interactivity now this is something we've never heard before i think uh, back in the old five nights of freddy's all we've really seen is the performers like the animatronics on the stage singing and that's about as far as they go yeah but this time around maybe there's some buttons they can press to get them to say certain things or maybe there's some kind of ai introduced into these animatronics and that's why they can probably speak uh, yep. something like that interesting because it could actually refer to the speaker on their chest i guess maybe you talk to these animatronics and they might respond back yeah, that would be pretty cool. That could that could be some kind of interactivity. And I guess with the last teaser on scottgames.com when we saw the whole get uh, get back on your stage now, perhaps they can respond to that or yeah, do something yeah. before. Yeah, so I was going to say, yeah. That's interesting. And another thing is the fact that it says at the end as well, it says customized pizza catering. So that's interesting as well. It has a double barrel meaning with the customized pizza catering because it could also mean like literally just your pizza being customized with whatever you want on it. Or it could literally mean like you can customize the person serving you or something. 
something like that. Yeah, it's interesting. I think it refers possibly to maybe the way the characters will, characters will bring the pizza to the customer. Yeah. And I guess that could possibly lead on to maybe say how these guys could be used for malicious intent as well because they could be customized in a pretty dark and horrible way. And obviously we have been debating where this will take place for quite a while now. And now yes. it, just in the first sentence alone, it is solved. We're pretty much in a circus location. And obviously loads of you are going to be thinking based on just these images alone that we're seeing, how is this a circus? But I believe that what we're seeing is behind the scenes of, you know, what a technician's meant to see, not the actual main attraction. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, that's a great point. And there's loads of things to back this up. Actually, in the teaser images Scott's given us too, we'll be delving into that in a lot of depth. But guys, I guess we were all right. And uh, we were right to say that baby is like a ringleader for all the other guys. That's how it seems to be. Yeah. So maybe we were right as well in saying that all these guys have their own separate individual acts. And it, with the puppet, with Freddy, with the Bonnie puppet, and then we've got Ballora, and we've yeah. got the... I mean, what could Funtime Fox's performance be, though? That's one we haven't quite seen yet. Uh, well, if it's anything like Five Nights at Freddy's Pirate's Cove, it'll probably yeah. be like maybe just telling a story and like a ah, funny action or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's an interesting point. So now we're moving on to the final part where it says now hiring late night technician. Must enjoy cramped spaces and be comfortable around active machinery. And of course, we get the usual not responsible for death or dismemberment. So I guess the last bit again, the death or dismemberment, the fact is telling us that again, that again, that shows it's behind the scenes. They're not going to really be publicizing this in, you know, news articles and things like that. Yeah, true. And the fact that it says that it's hiring a technician. I mean, yes, basically, we know the purple guy to be a technician or supposedly yes. a technician due to how it can take apart the animatronics in yes. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 and the help them save the minigame when he takes you apart and the game ends and it says you can't save them. Also in FNAF 3 as well, I guess, at the end of each night because he can yeah. physically dismember them with this thing. I guess this debunks the theory that we're possibly playing as the purple guy. It doesn't necessarily mean we're not going to be playing as a relative of the purple guy, but obviously this must take place after the purple guy gets spring-locked because obviously it's in the same kind of timeline, isn't it, where, I mean, this is a sister location for Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes. For, for you know, the Fazbear Entertainment. Absolutely. And obviously yeah. there's just one technician, the special technician that knows exactly what he's doing. So the fact that they're hiring a technician goes to show that we can't possibly be paying as, playing as the purple guy. Something very interesting to consider as well, guys, is in the Five Nights at Freddy's 3 Night 1 phone call, it talks about some guy who knows the location of the Five Nights at Freddy's establishment, and he actually manages to open up the back room and find, quote, a real one. So what we've got to remember here, guys, is someone knows about the previous FNAF locations, knows how to manipulate them, knows where different things were built, and it just makes me think now, maybe this might be potentially the technician we're playing as, because this guy in FNAF 3, we didn't get much information on him, and he also never got caught for any anything. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Obviously, um, Scott doesn't throw stuff out there for no apparent reason. Everything that he throws into his games yes. has some kind of backstory behind them, so it really wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. Exactly, and it, you know, if people were to put this on like a board from FNAF 3, you know, this guy who knew the location of the building, pinned it up, there'd be no notes pretty much underneath him just yet, and maybe this game will be the one which will shine the light on that whole scenario. And, I mean, it might give us a bit more backstory about the FNAF 3 thing as a whole anyway, because there's a lot of time between there and the Springlock failure what happened. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Oh, Alright, and now I think it's a good time to move on and talk about these images in depth. So we're going to start first with what appears to be some kind of green lit room. And for me, I think this room offers so much uncanny valley, it's uh, uncanny, I'm going to say. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the amount of like features that we've got here, obviously yep. what we're seeing here, the static, the monitors, you just know some kind of Easter egg is going to flash up on these um, monitors here. Maybe like yes. a purple guy face or like a puppet face. And talking of puppet, there seems to be a lot of puppet-esque kind of faces around this. Obviously, we see um, if that's Ennard in the middle yes. there. Yes, yes, that definitely and, like, looks like the mask of Ennard. And that reminds me of the puppet from the Five Nights at Freddy's 3 um, in camera 8, I think it was, how it was yes. just mounted on the wall. Yep. But I know that, like, obviously there's so much going on here. This is obviously where the masks of the animatronics are stored and kept. And I believe that that on the left is actually a clock. Yeah, yeah it seems to be a baby-faced clock, which is yeah. really interesting. Like, what? maybe that's actually used to tell us the time in the night, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. Be, yeah, that's really that's a good idea, actually. And, and maybe, oh, maybe, maybe it's not just, like, a, you know, straight on a UI, not like a 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Because looking at the screen, they look kind of blank and we can see a mouse on screen yeah. uh, like a cursor meaning this is definitely in-game footage yeah definitely and like just to the right and left here we see the old Five Nights at Freddy's 1 kind of 
uh, power and light buttons for doors. Yes. So, and these are in multiple rooms as well. So obviously yeah. Scott wanted to bring back the original kind of suspense of turn on the light, seeing if the animatronics there. And I think that's a great idea to be fair, because that, that really did kick in the suspense. Absolutely. And I think another thing I spotted was potentially a way for us to communicate with maybe someone who's going to be operating the phones, giving us the tutorials. Just to the right hand side of the fan, you yeah. can see a big speaker uh, just there. And then underneath yeah. that, you got like a panel where you can input some kind of digits and code. Yeah. So maybe that will be like some way of communicating. And uh, I, another thing I spotted straight away was in the top right hand corner, there's actually a camera. So yeah. I think there might be some form of camera system, but I wouldn't know how to operate because of course we had like the swipe down mechanic. You see, there's nothing on the actual screen though. So, yeah. you know, maybe we have to face away or maybe the fuzzy monitors above will be the camera feeds. Just looking at this alone, like I said, there's going to be loads of room for Easter eggs. Maybe obviously in the spare parts and services room in Five Nights at Freddy's 1, you yes. get the animatronics and the heads looking at you. So yep. maybe all of these heads will turn to look at you, glowing eyes maybe, or the... I don't even know what that thing is in the bottom right there. It looks like some kind of like gypsy animatronic woman. Yeah, it does. It looks... It's in the same same design as Ballora, or I guess we can say a similar design. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's some kind of like bobblehead, the arm spring, the head springs or something like that. Yeah. But I think that thing's going to be looking at you and uh, man, if those things in the bottom left look at you too, that's going to be creepy because They're they look kind of like... Yeah, they look humanoid and uh, yeah. that is... You see, this is one of the things. I think when Scott sometimes designs the animatronics, he makes them look really creepy because he's got this like style about it and yeah. oh man, if those those eyes turned and or if the one to the far right with its eyes closed opened them, then that would be absolutely insane. Definitely, yeah. So the next image we're going to be looking at is the elevator or lift, however you want to say it. And yep. straight uh, straight away, I just noticed then saying to Ryan, we have the same kind of speakerphone system and the number keypad. Yeah. Both in that. So obviously this has something to do with the game mechanics. Maybe uh, this is how we hear certain animatronics in certain rooms, or like Ryan said, how a potential phone guy could communicate with you. Maybe there's certain things you have to type into the keypad to get out of a certain room or to get into a certain room. Yeah. Who knows? That'd be interesting. Maybe there'd be like some kind of hint in one of the rooms and we have to find it. Yeah. Uh, it. It might change the way the game plays or yeah, maybe we can use these panels as like flicking between the cameras or something through, so we don't have to actually flip up a camera system off screen. Yeah. Uh, that would be interesting, but I think the elevator is a very uh, self-explanatory picture. I mean, we've seen the trailer where we're physically moving down and I think that one does more than the static image and I think uh, other than the small kind of uh, confusing animatronic, which I'm saying in the right hand side is it, it, it looks 3D and I've never seen anything like it. I don't really think there's anything new here. No, there's nothing new here. So the next one is really interesting. I know the Ryan's got a few really good points to actually raise on this one because it shows Fun Time Freddy and of course the Bonnie puppets in the shadows completely. And to the left, we've got like some weird equipment. We've got wires hanging and things like that. Too many wires almost, which leads us to think this might be a room different to all the others. Yeah, now if you remember, we're obviously going to be playing as a technician and due yes. to all the wires that we're seeing, that reminds us of Enad. Can I just put that out straight away? It reminds me of a diagnostics room where yes. you probably test out the animatronics functions, uh, see if they're all working to scratch but i believe yeah. that maybe the enad will actually try and possess these animatronics so you have to kind of keep enad away before these animatronics kill you absolutely and another interesting thing as well is in the bottom left corner whatever that panel is just there it's all bleeped out red yeah. so something might have gone wrong and also i think the other thing we've got to say is that there is a light source coming from the top we can see that um, but it's not actually lighting the back of the room so uh, there's something about this room which is really really gigantic in size yeah. so what else could be lurking in the shadows back there and talking about lurking in the shadows, if you look to the top right, we see the same eyes that we actually saw in the FNAF World update. So maybe that could be Baby, maybe it's a different, maybe like a puppet kind of source. But it's very interesting that Scott chose this colour and ex uh, two of them, exactly. Exactly, because if we actually think about this as well, we did play as like a small atari style Freddy when we walked in and saw the creator killing himself. And now we've got the two yellow eyes. It seems a bit too ironic for there not to be a connection here. And I mean, it's a big room again. The creator could potentially, like in this dimension, mentioned be some other animatronic, maybe even Ennard it could be, because yeah. of course, the manipulating style, and you know, the, the eyes in the back, it does, it kind of may it ticks too many boxes for it to be nothing. Definitely. So the next image we're going to be looking at is the vents, and this one is a very confusing one, because we don't know if this is going to be a way of transporting between rooms, maybe like Five Nights at Freddy's 4. I think that the, the teleport, the transportation between rooms is going to be like Five Nights at Freddy's 4, in which you click, and then you run to a certain door or something like that. Yeah. But yep. I don't know, the vents, like, for example, in that green room that we 
saw previously, it was a dead end room. So therefore yep. it was like the ventilation system, a way of getting away from animatronics or a way of teleporting between rooms. But yep. I really can't imagine a technician using the ventilation system to get around. So it must yep. be an escape kind of strategy. Definitely. Or maybe a way for him to quickly maneuver between rooms rather than walking like down the corridors and stuff because of yeah. safety reasons. I think honestly, this leads into the room, which is kind of green and yellowy tinted yeah. where we see all these weird things because like if you look at the office as well it's very clean it's very kind of uh, it's just it just looks very metal like i think that's the best way to describe it yeah. and this room is all green lit it looks totally different it looks like a totally different environment and i think other than that we'd need to know more specific specifics about when or what scenario would use this uh um this ventilation system to run down in to probably know what it's for definitely yeah okay guys and so we're now talking about the final image which is of course the office now in the bottom left we see mouse to look around so potentially this could be like a tutorial or some way of us learning the mechanics behind the game but something really really interesting which i'm glad has actually been chosen to be shown by scott is the picture of baby because now we can really really clearly see we was correct in saying that the mini uh, the biddy babs excuse me were actually hanging around the baby animatronic too yeah and no, once again we see the power supply here with the yep. i believe that each of these power supplies are going to like this when you press that top button there it's going to light up whatever's here oh man and yeah. imagine that you see them all on stage and then one of them goes missing and the yep. mouse to look around if this is a 360 kind of dome maybe yep. like you see one but you have to look around to see where it is maybe like oh, okay yeah because we're obviously like um fnaf 4 you had to use the mouse to kind of look around yes. left and right so maybe it's going to be the same thing for that to kind of see where the animatronics are absolutely i think that sounds very a very good idea and i think the final thing really we can say about the office is that if you look in front there's way too many buttons and things going on so yeah. i don't think this is going to be a control system we're going to have to really muddle with but no. i think it's just there more to make the setting more dramatic so if we get an error and everything starts going crazy it might make the player feel a little bit more panicked it might make things feel a bit more real and it just might immerse us really more into the game see i think that this control panel uh when you go into theater or drama or something like that you'll always have a light room at the top basically yes. the, our local theater basically it has like a control room to control the lights yes. so obviously this to me shows that what we're looking onto right now is going to definitely be the main stage yeah i think i'd have to agree with that because there's too many things it's almost like a show's about to take place. I want to be seated here, you know, do all the lights adjustments and stuff. And I think that's how it'd really go. And once again, you've got the uh, little megaphone, uh, well, audio thing there just below the little puppet magician. Yes. And you have the keypad as well. So that's obviously a recurring theme. Maybe this is where we can speak to the animatronics because it just looks a bit different. It looks more fixed. Maybe we can do like the announcements, you know, yeah. uh, ladies and gentlemen, prepare, get seated, things like that. Maybe that's where this would be done by. So if yeah. we can use that or if uh, audio comes through that, I guess we've got to find that out, but it could work either way. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So there are it, guys. That was a really, really in-depth analysis of the Five Nights at Freddy's sister location Steam page. We're still not done, guys. We've got a lot of things we want to talk about more in depth. And it's going to be exciting, man, now that we've got the discussions, as I say, in the community hub. There's going to be lots of new theories going around, and we'll be bringing the good ones to you guys for sure. Yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, why not hit a like rating on this? And if you're new to the channel, why not subscribe for more theories on sister location and other indie games? So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. We, of course, hope you did enjoy. And we will, of course, see you on the next one. Goodbye, guys. Want to see even more content from us? Consider liking and subscribing to ensure you'll see all content in the foreseeable future. And hey, why not check out our past two videos?